الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله from some of the things that lead us astray and cause our hearts to become hard and hardened and that divert us from the manhaj or the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih Ridwanallahi alayhim are first things like ba'ath tawheed meaning weak tawheed a weak understanding of tawheed and what it means and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is a raziq al khaliq that he, he created everything and he provides for everything and that he alone subhanahu wa ta'ala should be worshipped and that our avoiding sins is a part of that tawheed that when we sin that this weakens our iman and it weakens our tawheed because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us but do we really know that he subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Jibreel <coughs> alayhi salatu wa salam, he mentioned about the uh, about uh, Ihsan and he said, "In ta'budu Allah, ka'annaka tara, fa in lam tukun tarahu, fa innu yarak." That ihsan it is to worship Allah as if He sees you, and because it is to worship Allah as if you see Him, and because you do not see Him, know that He sees you. So when you do sins in maasi, if you were to actualize Tawheed, you would never do that because you would never uh, touch the forbidden, drink the forbidden, and smoke the forbidden in front of your community, in front of your peers, th those peers that are known for righteousness. You will do that with the people of, of sinfulness. You will join, you will join together in Ta'awan ala ithmi wa'adwan with them with sinfulness and enmity with them and backbiting and, and drugs and, and, and zina and fisk, you'll do that with them. But with someone righteousness, or someone who is righteous, you will feel shame and shyness. Okay? And this is from Iman to feel that shameness, that shamefulness and that shyness. But how much more so if you actualize Tawheed, would you do that if you knew that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you and that he is... Uh, over all things uh, omnipotent, that he is, you know, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees all things, huwa sami'un basir, he hears and, and sees everything. So if you know that, that aspect of tawheed, and that has to do with his sifat, and, uh, you know, his, his, his characteristics, his divine attributes, and that has to do with tawheed al -ibadah that you are worshipping Allah. Because why did the Prophet ﷺ say, in ta'budullaha ka'annaka ta ka tarah, worshipping Allah as if you see Him. So that shows us that that's a part of your tawheed. Avoiding sins is a part of actualizing tawheed. And when you do sins, that shows an ignorance of tawheed, of true tawheed, and of haqiqa to tawheed, and to haqqaqa tawheed. You know, it shows a weakness in your implementing tawheed. Because you know Allah sees you. None of us doubt that. But when we are doing the sin, because of the thrill that we receive, that, that, that limited enjoyment maybe of smoking that weed, of drinking that liquor, of doing uh, zina or whatever it is, we know that Allah is watching us, but we try to ignore that. We try to shut that out so we can continue in our sin. So strong tawheed is one of the things to help you prevent that hard heart. So weak tawheed also helps to seal your heart. The second thing that, uh, or the second way in which a person, uh, their heart becomes hard is, of course, ma'asi itself is doing sin. So when you do sin, as the Prophet said, and is mentioned in the Quran as well, that that run, that the, this covering, this black spot begins to uh, envelop the, the, the heart 
when you do sin. So the more you sin, the more your heart becomes black and the more it becomes sealed from, from goodness and from fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from enjoining the good and forbidding the evil because now you're becoming more used to sinfulness. It becomes a part of your ad, it becomes a part of your habit. It becomes a part of, of what you do and what you enjoy and that keeps you away from doing the good. So it helps to seal your heart and your heart becomes harder and harder until you begin to remove those sins by making toba and by doing righteous deeds. Another thing which hardens the heart is the love, the hub fi dunya, the love of the dunya. And they love the life of this world, or they prefer the life of this world, meaning that they perhaps prefer, prefer that they love the akhirah as well, but they prefer, they give preference to the life of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, because all of us fall into this to a greater or lesser extent. And you know this when you're in the state of sinfulness. You realize it. Sometimes you realize it. You realize that you're praying, alhamdulillah, but you just want to get through the prayer because you got to get in that business transaction. You got to think about your future. You got to think about your university. You got to think about maybe even some sins that you're going to do. Even during the prayer, you may think like this. And so it shows all of this is the result of a hard heart. And all of it contributes to a hard heart. So it's a cycle of sin and a cycle of hardness and a cycle of weak of weakening the iman. And to Allah Sunati wal Jama'ah, Al Iman, Yazid bi Ta'a, wa Yamqus bil Ma'asiya. This is to Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah believes that sinfulness, it weakens your iman. And obedience to Allah increases your iman. So they're the opposites. And we believe that we all have both. The Prophet said, All the children of Adam commit sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. So all of us, that Baba of Toba is open for us. And that's a reminder first to me before you. So this loving this excessive love, that doesn't mean you don't love your family and enjoy your work maybe or enjoy doing da'wah or enjoy doing good deeds and things in this life. Oh, our Lord, oh, Allah, please give us good in this life as well as the hereafter. We love many things about this life. This is what we know, what we see and experience. But when it's ziyada, when it becomes too much love for this dunya and staying in this dunya and letting the dunya cause you to sin and sinning in order to gain and achieve more dunya, then this is athar al to dunya. This is preferring the dunya over the hereafter. And this is what hardens our heart. Another trait we need to avoid, and that is a contributor to hardening the heart, is al-hasad, is enmity. And the scholars, they mention al-hasad, it is to want what someone else has. And there, there's different levels. Ben Uthaymin really goes into this in his, and we, we talked about it in our lecture series on uh, manners. So if you have a chance, go back in and listen to the lectures, even though they're long lectures, but there's so many fawaid because we use bin Uthaymin's explanation of Bulugha Maram. And so in there you'll find that the Imam mentions that there's different types of hasid, but we're going to stick to one category that he mentions, and that is mentioned by the ulama, well known by the ulama, and that is to wish to remove the ni'mah of someone else, to, re to remove the ni'mah of someone else. So for example, what I see, unfortunately, and we see this in a lot of our communities, some of our Salafi communities and other communities, we see that whenever someone is doing something good, we might see a da'i, we might see you know, a person who calls to Allah and calls to Islam and is doing so many good deeds. You see all the people hating in the corner. Man, you know, in their hearts, they wish he would fail. 
in their hearts, they rejoice when they find a mistake or when they think he has a mistake. They rejoice. Some people rejoice. <laughs> we got it. Let's make a new video clip and cut and paste and put it together. Let's talk about a whole other community and talk about why they're not speaking against this individual. So this is, you know, so a lot of this is from Hasid that they want the Nama to be removed from that person. They don't want him to be so popular. They don't want that sister to have that wealth that she inherited. They don't want the sister to buy the new house. They don't want, you know, they, they think she's too beautiful. Why did she get a husband like this? Why did the brother get two wives? Okay, all of this comes from Hasid. So this are, these are things that harden the heart and they help to seal the heart. So we got to break free from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Another trait which is a part of uh, sealing the heart, is a naqs al-ibadat. It means to have shortcomings in your worship. And subhanAllah, as I'm mentioning this, I'm thinking about myself and how a, a lot of these traits pertain to me. So think about how they pertain to you. And whenever you get into a sin or sins, you will more often than not find you're not doing your ibadah like you used to. You're not even coming close. To, you, you might skip your your uh, nawafil, your, your extra prayers. You might no longer pray those sunnahs anymore, any of them maybe. Or you might rush through certain prayers. You might leave the jama'ah. You don't even pray in jama'ah anymore as a man or whatever. You know, there's many things and many ways that the shaitan tricks you. You still may do ibadah. But your ibad is weak. And your ibad is naqas. It has many shortcomings. Many deficiencies. It's not where it should be at all. And not where it used to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tabarak wa ta'ala, forgive us all. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And bless us with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah. Ameen. Another, benef another uh, reason for the sealing of the heart is da'af al is weak knowledge. When you have weak knowledge, it's so easy to sin because you don't really know what's halal and what's haram. You don't know as the Prophet ﷺ, between them is those issues which are, are doubtful, which we don't really know the hukum, we don't know the rule. Many people don't know, most of the people don't know. They don't know the hukum, they don't know if it's halal or haram and they just do it. And many people just do the haram. And they take it, they take it lightly. You know, they just do everything. But alhamdulillah, maybe they pray, which is a ni'mah min ni'amillah. And maybe they do some other good deeds, but then they have so many sins, like just regular sins, and so many other weaknesses and deficiencies in their ibadah. Yeah, they fast, but they don't really give up bad speech. They don't lower their gaze when they fast. They, you know, they listen to a little music when they fast, whatever the case may be. These are things that weaken your ibadah and are a part and illustration of weak ibadah. And they also seal the heart. Another thing or trait which uh, seals the heart is Hajar al Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to put the Quran back in our lives and for it to be a light and a guidance for us. We need the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hajar al-Quran is when you leave the Quran. It's just collecting dust on your shelf. You don't pay any heed to it. You don't read it weekly even, maybe. This is Hajar al-Quran. And so this, Ahabatifillah, is also a means for weakening our iman and sealing our hearts. Because then you you're, you don't even want, maybe not even want to hear the Quran. Some people don't even want to listen to the Quran. They could have a jinn. They could the shaitan could have just came over. Came, they listen to so much music and they watch so much uh, videos and this and that and the other. They just don't even have time and want to spend any minutes on the Quran. They don't even, and, and 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 even more so. They moreover they don't even want to pick up the Quran. So this is the danger and how it seals the heart. Another way in which the heart becomes sealed is skillet the dhikr. That's why we talked a lot about dhikr as well and the importance of dhikr. And this is one of the greatest things you can do in this life 
is dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal. It's, it's one of the major uh, uh, deeds that we can do. And so we have to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remembered Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, you know, he would make tawbah and istighfar more than 100 times a day. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what about us? We're so weak and we are so in need and it's so easy to make dhikr. It's so easy to, lay, easy to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wallahu Akbar. That's sahal jiddin. It's very easy. So try to be conscious when you do that and just keep your tongue wet from remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Try to, re you're in the car, you're walking to the store, you're walking to the market, you're doing this, learn some of the du'as and that's why we tried to memorize some du'as and you can find them. On, on, on the YouTube page, but try to spend time remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because illa the dhikr, when you do little, very little uh, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also remember that the munafiqun, they do remember Allah. But qalila, they remember Allah very little. So that's a scary thing. That's a very frightening thing that the munafiqun pray. The hypocrites pray. What are, you know, that's that's very scary because then you see how weak your own state is and you wonder, am I one of the hypocrites? Billah. May Allah protect us from kufr, shirk, and nifaq. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. The last trait I want to talk about, ahabitifillah, is that hardens the heart is a ghafla wa nisyan al mawt. That's imperative. Al ghafla wa nisyan al mawt. And that is to when you just become totally uh, unaware, uncognizant, or incognizant, not sure how you pronounce it, of death. That you, you forget death. You don't think about death, and you don't remind yourself about death at all. You're just you're like totally as if death doesn't exist, but it's, it's calling us all. All of us are on a path to death. Some of us will die today. Some of us tomorrow, some of us in a year, some of us in 20 years, some of us 30, 40, 50 years. We don't know. But we don't want to forget death. Death reminds you and it puts it all in perspective. It puts it in perspective. What's important in this life is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeping those ties of kinship, being with your, your family, you know, having that time. It really isn't collecting the wealth, even though we know we like wealth and we need some wealth. Oh Allah, bless us with, you know, the good in this life as well as the hereafter. We want this and protect us from the hellfire. And so it's very important to be cognizant of death. Every soul should taste death. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be conscious of death and to let that to be a deterrent for our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of the dhakirin wa dhakirat and be of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and remembers. Allahumma ni as'alaka hubbuk wa hubbu man ya hubbuk wa hubbu li kulli amalin balladhani hubbuk. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with the same. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.